be a different Houston team today, too. Marcus Sasser, the American Conference Player of the Year, not starting, questionable. With a groin injury he suffered yesterday, he did go through a full warm-up period, but his availability is in serious doubt. Houston wins the tip. Our officials, Doug Shows, Joe Lindsay, Pat Adams. A terrific crew, two terrific teams, a terrific atmosphere here in Fort Worth. Here we go. The final game on ESPN before the bracket is revealed in a couple of hours. The key to know is with or without Marcus Sasser, everybody on the floor embodies the culture and identity of this Houston program. And if they didn't, they wouldn't play. Jamal Shedd misses a three and the rebound to Kendrick Davis, who certainly had a say in the player of the year voting. He's a first team all pick for the third straight year. He and DeAndre Williams have dominated this tournament. Williams, the fifth year senior rising over awesome. the freshman, Jarris Walker. Williams <laughs> opens the scoring for Memphis. All right, if you're a director and you're, you're, call, you're doing a Memphis game, you gotta be quick to get to those reactions from DeAndre Williams because every one of them is fantastic. Williams and Davis have averaged 57 and a half points, just the two of them in this American tournament. A three from Terrence Arsenal, and Arsenal scores it. The freshman in his first career start has the first Houston basket. Well, the key there is seeing one go down early. You have a different confidence when you've already made a basket, and the confidence that you have is something that you actually seek out shot opportunities. Davis got around Shed. Davis misses a three, and it bounces over the basket. Houston ball. I mean, we came into this game, and I got to tell you, I was really excited about this matchup. You know, Houston, the number one team in the country, and understandably so, I would say is, is a program that it is, is an example of what college basketball could and should be. Great culture, identity, serves their community really well. Tremont Mark's floater is rebounded by Jawan Roberts. Couldn't finish, but Roberts is fouled on the way up. And to finish that thought, on the other end, you have a Memphis team, as I mentioned, right? You start off with Penny Hardaway, and you think it's James Wiseman and Precious Achua and, you know, Imani Bates and Jalen Duran last year. I mean, there was so much hype around these programs, yet they struggled. And what they found is their identity and the way they play is more like DeAndre Williams. He's the guy, his passion, his joy, his energy, his effort, all those things. That becomes what you can build off of. And if you bring in somebody like Kendrick Davis... That just elevates the ceiling even more. So I think Penny Hardaway has really found something special, something that's, you know, something you can build in perpetuity going forward. Roberts at the line. Williams did just pick up the foul. He can really hurt them when he gets into foul trouble, which he does often. And Williams has the rebound as Roberts misses both. Jaden Hardaway, Penny's son, back in the starting lineup today, along with Elijah McCadden. Chandler Lawson, Williams, and Davis. Memphis will go nine or ten deep. Hardaway. Here is Williams. Sizing up Roberts. He won't be afraid to shoot from out there. With a slow release, he delivers a three. It's something special, man. I mean, you talk about 57 and a half points combined averaging for Davis and DeAndre Williams. That's remarkable. He's playing with a, a whole nother level of confidence right now. Shed Mark Arsenal, the guards for Houston with Walker and Roberts. Here's Jarris Walker. Roberts fighting for the board. It is going to be picked up by Arsenal. A cutting Walker gets it from Arsenal, and Walker goes hard into the lane. Jarris Walker fouled by Elijah McCadden. Welcome to Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. It is the American Conference Championship game, and it is one heck of a matchup. Memphis, the two seed, Houston, the one seed, meeting for the second straight year in the title game, meeting for the second time in eight days, and meeting for the third time this season. Kevin Brown, John Crispin, Myra Metcalf, our reporter, and the big news, Marcus Sasser, the American Player of the Year and likely All-American, did not start the game after suffering an injured groin yesterday. His status officially is questionable after Sasser went through a full warm-up period before the game. I would say throw out the previous contest. It's a different team. It's different without Marcus Sasser, although they will still be Houston. But Memphis is different. When Williams and Davis are playing at the level they're playing, averaging 57.5 points a game in this tournament, it's been remarkable. And, and Williams off to a great start. Starting five brought to you by Kay Jewelers. Williams has the first five. Hardaway, Lawson, and McCadden. And Davis, who gets to the free throw line as much as nearly anybody in the country, fouled by Jarris Walker. 
Memphis with wins over UCF 81-76 and Tulane 94-54. Penny Hardaway said one of the best played games of his five years at Memphis. They have been targeting this game after losing to Houston on a buzzer-beating shot from Jamal Shedd a week ago. And frankly, they were targeting this game and this matchup a long time before that. Here's what they've done in the American Championship. Williams, 62 points. Davis, 53. At one point on Friday night, Williams and Davis scored 38 consecutive Memphis points. But there's there's often a manual for playing defense, so, so to speak, right? You know, here's your adjustment. Here's how you can limit them. The difference is Kendrick Davis is so good with the basketball, and DeAndre Williams has all the freedom in the world to just be DeAndre Williams. Houston starters brought to you by K Jewelers. We highlight Terrence Arsenal for his first career start. His three-pointer, the only Houston field goal. He gets the start in place of Sasser. Walker misses a long two, and here's Davis. Up ahead, here's Williams. A beautiful combination. Walker blocks it, but Alex Lomax follows it up. And Kelvin Sampson's frustrated with the rest of his defenders for not getting back. Great play by Walker, but it was Alex Lomax trailing the play. Memphis is always lethal on the break. Here's Roberts smart. inside, took smart. his time and scored it. No, smart play be by DeAndre Williams. Just concede the layup if you're behind the play. That's one that in years past, frankly, earlier this season, DeAndre Williams would pick up that foul. And he's already picked up one. Uh -huh. Can't afford to lose him. Davis down the lane, wild shot, tipped by Shed. Roberts saves it to Williams. That's what they do. That, that's, that's a part of who they are. They just play a brand of basketball that is wild. It, it's chaotic at times, but it's a chaos they're comfortable with. And if you can get the game played that way, it's likely that Memphis has comfort and confidence, and Houston has to struggle to find it. Jamal Shev, second team all conference point guard. He has been their steadying force through injury the last couple of seasons. He'll have to be again today. Mark steps inside Davis, finds Shed, deep three, no good, up for grabs, and it's Williams out jumping everybody. I really like the goal if you're Memphis is to have DeAndre Williams play 40 minutes. Stay out of foul trouble is the biggest key. Williams fade away. That's what he's got. <laughs> Spins it out. <laughs> so, I'll tell you, you talk about freedom. You talk about a green light, that's neon green. And the green light is not just what he does offensively, it's also on the defensive end. Arsenal takes Dandridge to the hole, and there's a foul as well. What a lift by the freshman Terrence Arsenal in his first career starts. Those of you on ESPN News will be moving. Oh, we met with Kelvin about 40 minutes before the game, and he said, I, I still haven't heard from Marcus. Tested it out in warm-ups. Kelvin did say yesterday, I would tend to err on the side of caution, knowing that there are... Enormous stakes for yes, Houston. Winning a trophy here would be incredible, but yeah, there's a lot of dynamics. Can cut down yes. in Houston. There's a lot of dynamics. There's the long game, and, and there's ultimately what you want to do, which is get back to Houston for the Final Four. There's also keeping things kind of close to the chest in terms of seeding and preparation for this game. You wanted Memphis to prepare for Marcus Sasser. Wow, what a finish. Strong Dandridge. drive. Malcolm Dandridge, who played a career-high 28 minutes against Houston on Sunday. Now, they have to be better and more careful with Malcolm Dandridge defensively. They need him to be able to bang down low. You do not want him having to cover good defense by Alex Lomax. You don't want Dandridge to have to cover someone like Arsenal off the bounce. It kind of negates the strength that he gives you by being on the floor. It's the first Houston turnover. Terrence Arsenal making his first career start in place of Sasser. He's already got six points, which is the most he's scored in 17 games. Memphis Tigers 25 and 8, finished the season on a 13 and 3 run. Very good away from home as well. There's a foul as Arsenal and Cheney try to get a hand in front on the pass to Dandridge. Those are some of those plays that you just kind of. You shake your head a little because there's no angle to make that pass. Alex Lomax has to dribble that thing over to the right to be able to make that entry pass. And that's what they do from time to time. That's also, in a way, what makes them dangerous. They do things that you really don't want to do at times, and it works. Foul was against Arsenal. Here's Dandridge on Reggie Cheney. Two very experienced players down low. Davis got Cheney in the air once, twice. And missed the jump shot. Rebound, Jawan Roberts, the Americans' 
most improved player in a second team all conference pick. And what Houston has to get comfortable with is kind of figuring out a little bit of what Memphis does defensively. And again, they, they don't really play by the same rules. They'll, they'll run and jump and chase from behind and get out of position and scramble. But it's something you have to have poise early to figure out. Arsenal oh, nope. with a step back try. Good box out by Williams on Roberts. Uh, that's not Arsenal's game yet. Like we will be. Still has some development to do. Davis, the leading scorer in the American, adds two more. He's special. He's really special. And look, the Jekyll and Hyde approach with Davis and Williams, it's brilliant. It's beautiful in its own way, where you've got this stabilizer in Davis, and then the kind of anything goes with Williams. It almost allows DeAndre to be DeAndre. Davis and Williams with 11 of the first 15 for Memphis. Averaging 57 and a half combined in the first two tournament games Four to shoot for Mark Roberts gives him a screen Mark held up by Williams throws it wildly wow. Wow. Somehow some way made it wow. Pat Adams will check to see <laughs> if that got off before the shot clock expired It, it was really good defense and a good job in a, a Houston program that all season has kind of been in and out of that top spot It's just it's wild, man. It's a great time of year. We said in the open, uh, we'll repeat it for those of you just joining us, which is there isn't anything in the NCAA tournament at stake. Houston will be a one seed. Memphis will probably be an 8-9. It feels like the world's at stake when these two teams play as Memphis turns it over. There's a fire. There's an intensity. There's an absolute hunger yeah. that both of these teams have, particularly when they play each other. It's a respectful hatred, to be honest. It really is. Like, and and that's, the, uh, that's not a nasty thing to say. I, I think you appreciate your competitors enough to really want to go at them. And these guys want to go at each other. Kelvin Sampson and Penny Hardaway, two huge personalities who've been incredibly respectful of each other. That's a three, or a manual sharp, in, out, and back in again. And the freshman Sharp and Arsenal providing an early Houston lift. Sharp's another one. If you can get him making shots, he's just got to stay on the floor to stay out of foul trouble. Defensively, he's still got some improvement to do. McCadden drives it into Walker. Another strong finish. Memphis has attacked the rim with Panache. I don't really know what that means, but sounds good. It sure does. It'll be your vocabulary word of the day to look up at the under 12. Sounds like something you top a bagel with <laughs> Shed with a pull-up oh he has not had a touch so far the long rebound deflected to sharp it's the fifth offensive rebound for Houston which is one of the nation's best at that sharp short and he tracks it down but he was out of bounds Emmanuel sharp and Terrence Arsenal are going to have to play major yeah. minutes today with the expected absence of Marcus Sasser. Well, they've they've got to be able to play fearlessly. I think when you get young guys, you give them more of an opportunity. They have to take that opportunity, view it more as responsibility to say, I'm filling a role in this team. My role got a little bigger given our circumstances, our realities, which is Marcus Sasser is not in this game, unlikely to be in this game, I guess, at the, still at this point. But you just have to do the little things right. Again, the culture pieces, the identity pieces, and if you get open shots, you make open shots. Arsenal just committed his second foul Without Sasser Foul trouble is going to be an even bigger issue and Kelvin Sampson is politely reminding Arsenal of that oh, Foul trouble is going to be finished a 17 and 1 regular season in conference play He was named the American coach of the year again as Houston looks to win its third straight title It's remarkable and how about the fan base at Memphis? I think Memphis has one of the, the better fan bases in the country. Houston's phenomenal. Fertitta said something on, on another level. But that fan base really loves their Memphis basketball program. And I, I think they should be really excited about what they're seeing now, which I do think is sustainable going forward. Memphis turns it over as we check in with Byron. You know, Friday morning, Kelvin Sampson was getting ready for the East Carolina game when he got a phone call and learned that his twin sister, Karen Sampson, had passed away after a battle with a long illness. Uh, his wife told me that he tried to hold it in, tried to keep it from the team, but broke down in front of the team prior to that East Carolina game as all the emotions have kind of poured out. He's certainly coaching with a heavy heart. He told me he's not sure what he's going to do next in terms of funeral arrangements, but it's certainly on his mind, and it's certainly something that he's trying to get through at one of the most difficult moments of his coaching career, fellas. Myron, thank you, and we're all, as we said to Kelvin, we express it again here, all thinking about Kelvin and his family. The Sampsons, there's so many of them here. His wife, Karen, is here in the front row. Son, Kellen, is, of course, the lead assistant. His daughter, Lauren, director of external operations. 
Mark hits the jumper. It, it is not talk. It's not bluster. It's literally a family yes. affair in Houston. Yeah, he, Karen, he said Karen Sampson was his biggest fan. He said she never, ever missed a game. She actually graduated from North Carolina. She was a pharmacist, but she loved what Kelvin Sampson was doing down here and would have loved to be a part of this run that they're on right now. What an amazing run it's been. Thank you, Myron Olbax with a jumper. And the offense is high-flying early in a battle of two terrific defensive teams. Memphis playing at its pace with an early three-point lead. I think given how physical both teams are, we've had a good flow to this game, so teams are able to figure out kind of how they want to play. And the double team quickly there on Walker. Looked like something Houston usually does to opponents, and... They Houston thought they had a steal. They call it foul on Chaney. I thought they might call a kick, but I they're going to so get the too. foul on Chaney. I thought that was interesting. How about Memphis giving Houston a little uh, of the Houston defense with that hard double? I mean, Javon Walker's been swinging for Houston. Yeah. <laughs> First foul against Chaney. Roberts replaces him. Arsenault's out of the game with two for Houston. Go back to it. Just watch the Memphis double there on Walker. You're forcing Walker to make a good decision with a pressure double. I like that move by Memphis. Davis Shed gives it off to Sharp, and he blows right by Sharp. Some miscommunication, and Kelvin Sampson immediately goes to his bench. Oh, it wasn't just miscommunication out top. It was that head fake, ball fake, eyeball fake that Kendrick Davis gave Tremont Mark that ultimately opened up. I bet our hand hauled under the basket got a good look. He's going to bring Arsenal back into the game despite the two fouls. Mark way off on a pull-up three. Davis, I mean, when you split, I mean, you you split and you get through. Watch that ball. Thing. <laughs> That's brutal, man. That is brutal. Just come right there. Look at the eyeballs, the, the facial expressions. Everything that he did was convincing Tremont Mark that he's making that pass just to set up the layup. That's pretty stuff. That's what the, the old vets do, right? You, the game slows down for you. You play at a different pace, your own pace, and you use head fakes, ball fakes, short fakes, eyeball fakes, mouth fakes, whatever you got. It all works. You're a big fan of eyeball fakes, I know. Right? Eyeball fakes, dude. Eyeball, especially get them wide. Lomax pulls up for a deep one. Lomax! <laughs> Alex Lomax, a career 29% three point shooter with a confident stroke from deep. Throw numbers out the window with Memphis. They're still going to fire. They just play. I always say less plays, less set plays, more playing, and here you go. Offensive foul called on Shed on the screen. Kelvin Sampson wants a timeout. He is voraciously signaling for a timeout. Tournaments. But Alex Lomax with an early seven. Kendra Davis with 60. Andre Williams with seven. There's a different level of confidence yeah. about this Memphis team. There is. I mean, again, I go back to the identity is really rooted more in the play, the passion, the joy of somebody like DeAndre Williams. Well, you, when you build your team around that and you get someone, a star like Kendrick Davis, look out. Damari Franklin, tough two, and it's in the hands of Mark. If that thing went in, we might as well just call it. <laughs> start the confetti already. I mean, 10 to 17 to start. That's... It's a good start for Memphis. Gets the nation's number one field goal defense, 36%. Shed yet to score, and Shed draws a foul. Driving it into Chandler Lawson, who picks up his first. Penny does a good job, but given how wild they are, and I say that with all the love in the world, given how wild they are at times defensively, he does a good job with his rotations, keeping guys fresh. There's really no let up, and, and each one that comes in is different in their own way. Jamal Shedd, 72% free throw shooter. In a game without Marcus Sasser, he is yet to score. But it is Selection Sunday tonight. We are just around two hours away from the reveal of the field of 68. 6 Eastern, 5 Central, Reese Davis and the gang. Look at the men's field of 68 at SportsCenter as the brackets are announced. Bracketology follows at 7, the women's selection special at 8. And then 10 Eastern, 9 Central, Bracketology, field of 136. Just stay here and then go to ESPN2 later. You're just going to want to hear about college basketball and talk about college basketball the rest of the day. And frankly, for the next three weeks. I was going to say, the rest of the day?
I think that's big for Jamal Shedd to get things going. I like the little switch up to his own, so long as they get a stop out of it. And they did. The ball's up for grabs, though. Lawson knocked it out of bounds, and Houston will take over. Well, that's the challenge in the zone. When the ball moves well, the defense has to move with the basketball. So when the defense shifts and a shot goes up from the perimeter, you're not there to block somebody, at least individually, out. So you have to be collective as a group in that zone on getting on the defensive glass. Houston, no field goals in the last three minutes. Six for 17 start for the Cougars without Marcus Sasser, who was a game time decision, but has not played and in all likelihood will not play. I think Shed's got to probe more and really try to get down in the paint. Arsenal looking for Roberts. Has the size on a Hardaway. Lomax gave him a soft double. Roberts passes out of it. Mark takes his time. Mark misses it. Walker fights for it. Wins the offensive rebound. And then Lomax knocked it away from Shed. Davis down the floor to score it. You really have to be cautious passing the basketball, especially those cross-court passes, skip passes. Memphis, they're playing like five safeties on the floor. They're always looking to take it away. At least the easy ones on the other end. Lomax, one of the nation's leaders in steals. Nearly two and a half a game with his first. Mark sizing up Davis. Mark takes it in. Mark misses another. And here's Davis in transition. It doesn't matter if he has numbers or not. He's always lethal. He'll pull it out this time to be safe. Well, and you should always be pushing to avoid allowing the Houston defense to get set. Now look at the matchup you got. You got Davis on Walker. You know he's attacking. Davis attacks. Davis. Terminated the dribble. Walker's all over him. Davis squeezed around, got the shot off. And Roberts ultimately grabs it and gets out of there with the possession. Here comes Roberts. And Roberts will be fouled. The blocking foul is called on the floor against Jaden Hardaway. Eight-point lead for Memphis. Looking for the conference title. Last year snapped an eight-season drought. They're going to go back-to-back. Myron, you had more from Penny in that huddle? Yeah, fellas, I know it feels like they're playing as fast as the 80s Lakers, but Penny Hardaway in the timeout said it's not fast enough. He said he wants them to push the pace even more, get the ball up the floor, and really show what they can do and take it up to another level. Myron, I have a follow-up question for Penny. How? Exactly. Good question. <laughs> That's what I was wondering. It's really about pushing the tempo here. You want to push it at this point so you keep that Houston defense from getting set. That's DeAndre Wiggins. <laughs> he just did a 360 to make a pass. Williams has been out of the game for about five minutes. Memphis has grown the lead with him. That'll be a charge on Hardaway. The last foul was on McCann before the break his second. This is Hardaway's first. See, I want to go back to that point. Look, when Houston gets their defense set, when they can see the basketball, when they can start communicating as a unit, they're really good. That's why one of the best defenses in the country. But if they're forced to scramble on the rebound, meaning Memphis gets a rebound and pushes it up, and, and Houston's scrambling, it's different. They're, they're not as effective. Shed 0 for 4 to start the game. And here's Davis. at fake on Walker. Gets to his spot. It. Kendrick Davis so pure in the mid-range game. But, but again, you have a defense retreating. And who picked up Kendrick Davis? It was Jairus Walker. So if Walker's the one stopping the basketball, you have an advantage and you play to your advantage. It's basketball. Modern-day basketball is about finding an advantage with good action and then continuing to play to it. Arsenal shot swatted away. There was a day when you would call a play to get a certain score, right? You would run America's play. You screen the screener, but we're going to get the two guard a shot. That doesn't work anymore. Ever since we started playing with a lot of changing defenses, that just doesn't work anymore. What works is good offensive action that gets a defense chasing, find an advantage, and attack with that advantage. Arsenal to the bench. Houston has won for its last nine with a scoring drought of more than three minutes. Sharp end of the shot clock. And Roberts tried to get it on the rim. He did hit the underside of the basket. Wow. And Walker's shot rims out. Davis blows by Shed. Takes the contact and gets to the lane. And he'll get to the line on the foul against Sharp. Houston has it really. There, there's a couple things you got to do if you're Houston. Number one, you, you've just got to settle in. You've got to settle into the way this game's game's being played. Recognize some of your vulnerabilities and then level up very rarely is it that houston has to level up to the game uh, today they do uh, memphis has set the tone for how this game's going to be played 
Davis, excellent free throw shooter, hits the first. Tonight, ESPN Sunday NBA matchup. Anthony Davis and the Lakers against Julius Randle and the Knicks. 9 Eastern, 8 Central. The Red Hot Lakers trying to keep their playoff push going here on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Davis, 85% free throw shooter, hits two. And there's Marcus Sasser, who it appears will not be playing in this game. And you got to know that's torture for a kid. I mean, you understand what he went through last year being out. Now this year, that happens yesterday after a phenomenal first round performance against East Carolina with 30 points. Roberts trying to back down Lawson. Double team comes. He works through it. A shot gets blocked. It was rejected by McCadden from behind. And then Mark commits a foul. They don't have any answers for Memphis on either side. Well, there are some opportunities, but you've got to get the Memphis defense moving east to west a little bit more. Maybe lift them a little bit. Because there's been helps, there's been help defenders just waiting for any drive. So maybe some ball screens, some slip screen action, particularly with Walker. I would run some some ball screen slips with Walker to the three point line. See if you can create some confusion, and, and maybe get Jamal Shedd going downhill. Just get to the basket. See if you can get to the foul line. Maybe get these guys in foul trouble and, and start to get back into this game from the free throw line. But the slip's going to come because Memphis has been doubling the ball at the top two. One and one for Chandler Lawson, a 60% free throw shooter. You know, another thing Memphis has really improved this year, they are a much better free throw shooting team. Five for five today on the year 74%, which would be their best mark since the 1987-88 season. I just think there's more consistency overall. The way they play day in, day out, they look like the same team. That hasn't always been the case. Shed beats the pressure to Roberts. Lawson contests it again. Lawson lost it to Walker. He finishes. Houston's first make after 10 consecutive missed shots. Yeah, that was a Houston bucket. Those are the things that that bench gets excited about. That's a culture play, a second chance opportunity. That's how you climb back in this game. The lead is a dozen for Memphis, which has controlled this game. Houston without Marcus Sasser. Memphis looking for its first conference tournament title since 2013 Conference USA. Yeah, they like this matchup. Davis over Sharp. Yep. Davis rise yep. and fire! Yep, that was so calculated you could see it. Kendrick Davis, oh, steal by Lomax. Lomax with another one. Davis oh boy. lifts the roof off! Oh boy. Well, Kevin, I, I think, look, it's as far as you want in ESPN's tournament challenge. Scan the QR code on screen to download the app, play the number one bracket game, create a group, invite your friends, and get ready for the madness. And I agree with Coach Cream. I couldn't hear what, what Wojo said. I'd probably agree with him, too. But in terms of pounding the paint, there's a couple ways to do it. Sometimes it's going to be off the bounce, but you could just throw it inside. But that double team's been really disruptive. So you've got to get some of the defenders out of the paint. It'll create some space to attack. An 18-point lead against not just the number one team in this conference, the number one team in the country, Sharp. Around and out. Another rebound to Lawson, who has dominated down low. I think the, the other way to look at it, too, is like I look at going at Williams. I, I think you've got to attack. Oh, look. Oh, oh my goodness. Almighty. Sharp hits the deck. Davis oh. hits 20 in the first half. Oh, I'm sorry. That's going to be on YouTube. He has as many points as the entire Houston team. Walker. No good. Rebound up for grabs. Arsenault is fouled. Uh, look. Sometimes it gets a little slippery out there. And Kendrick Davis has a wiggle. Uh, that's just, you're backpedal. Look, it, we're, a lot of us, we're just normal human beings. Go ahead and backpedal real fast and see what happens. You'll likely fall back over. But if Kendrick Davis is dribbling at you, I don't care how great of an athlete you are. That, that's a tough cover. Remember the first game between these teams this year, about a month ago in Houston, Kendrick Davis did not play. He was hurt in the UCF game earlier in the week. Jeez. He played very well Jeez. in the game a week ago. He scored 26 points against Houston on Sunday at the game-tying layup late. He's got 20 already, yeah. plus a couple of assists. Those numbers are ridiculous, but so is 40 points in the first half. Like, this is a Houston team that hasn't given up more than 50 points the entire tournament. And that feels like it'll change. Arsenal one for two. 
Now, I do think DeAndre Williams is so important to this team. I would seek out matchup opportunities to attack and go to him off the bounce. If Davis out of the game, they try to, and Shed gets a steal. Shed blowing through Williams. Shed finds Roberts for the step. No. Quick shot opportunities. Now get your defense set. A part of setting your defense is, is communicating. Try to take it away from Lomax. Dribbles out of it. Under three to play in the first half. Memphis shooting 63%. McCadden follows his own miss. Memphis plays by their own rules. I think that's what makes them so tough to figure out, tough to cover. Shed misses another one. Mark with an offensive rebound. Houston has a lot of those. They haven't converted them into too many points, though. That's 12 offensive rebounds. Because they're not easy offensive rebounds. They've been battles with a lot of bodies around, so you've got to just get the ball back out. Only four second chance points. Now six as Roberts taps in the miss from Shed. You understand what I'm saying? If, if the defensive rebounding is good for Memphis, they're present, they're trying. You just win that battle if you're Houston. Kicking that thing back out to get a good look is probably the best thing you can do because there, there are a lot of bodies inside. Lomax Into the paint, here's Williams Finds a cutting Chandler Lawson DeAndre Williams uh, Look, I, experience does matter uh, What he did was he looked baseline first Because that baseline drive, baseline drift That spin on the baseline, you usually throw baseline Defender took that away and Lawson made the right play He cut to the basket, Williams found him That was special, that's good basketball Man, like, we show the highlight, but really, it's the whole play here. This ball's going to go into Williams. He's going to spin baseline. He's going to look baseline. It's not there. Why defense takes the baseline pass away. Lawson makes the right read. That's good basketball, man. That, that's a team that has really developed throughout the course of this season. And with that development comes an identity that I talked about. The identity that is rooted more in DeAndre Williams than, than a Kendrick Davis. And I think that's what's sustainable. All right? It, it was, you know, are they going to be James Wiseman and Precious Achuet? No. Is Jalen Duran and Monty Bates? No. It's, it's more of these program guys that make you better not only for the time being, but beyond their tenure. Under tonight's selection, Sunday, 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Reese Davis and the gang will look at the men's field of 68 on Sports Center as the brackets are announced. We'll roll that right into bracketology, preview the men's field, then the women's selection special at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ESPN, and then previews both the men's and women's fields. 10 Eastern, 9 Central on ESPN 2. Roberts goes 2 for 2 at the line. The number one team in the country. Winners of 13 straight, undefeated away from home, undefeated in this arena all time. Looks absolutely shell shocked. Franklin feeds the post. It's Williams. It's Franklin again. It's a miss three. And it's Arsenault tapping it to the onrushing Roberts. Roberts takes it himself down the floor and feeds Cheney. Ah, the classic Roberts to Cheney break. <laughs> Hey, you draw it up, Kev. It's good to see the Houston fans up off their feet trying to will their team back into this game. It's just tough sledding without Marcus Sasser. Hard to find somebody that can really just kind of stop the bleeding and find some easy opportunities. Davis has been untouchable in the first half. The Houston, Texas native. Into Lawson. Into McCannon. Wow. Into the baskets. Oh, they just threw a lazy pass, Arsenault, and it knocked away by Williams, who once again is mean mugging all over the floor. Facial reacts from DeAndre Williams are priceless. And I, and I like that Houston's gone to that zone from time to time, but they haven't been great in it, partially because Davis is so good about lulling you to sleep and being able to split those defenders, get the ball to the high post area. But I'm a Lawson making the right pass to McCadden. I mean, they're, they're just playing as if they're all operating as one right now. Again, a, another thing we haven't seen from Memphis in, in previous years. This is a this is a together group. Which is ultimately what you think of with Houston, right? Connectedness, togetherness, family, all those things. Uh, that's what makes Houston special. That's the culture, the identity that we talk about. Houston's lost two games this year. 
one by six to Alabama, which might be the number one overall seed. One by a point to Temple. They're down 17 in the first half. Jamal Shedd crossing over Lawson, got into the lane, leans Tough. in, banks it home, and that will be that for the first half. There was a question about whether there was a delay of game or not on Mark touching the ball, but the officials are going to sort it out with the Memphis coaches, and we'll head to the line. One year ago in this tournament, he was playing for SMU. He was eliminated by Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers in the transfer portal as a grad transfer. He joined Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers, and he is 20 minutes away from sealing what is currently a foregone conclusion, his first NCAA tournament bid ever, but 20 minutes away from getting there as a conference tournament champion. I feel like a, a stop here out of the half is important for Houston. Jaden Hardaway, and he'll miss a shot, but they're not going to get the stop right away. Elijah McCann has the rebound for Memphis. Ken had a good first half. It was all Davis, though, with 20. Make oh it 23! Man, that's, a, that's just a dagger. I mean, you played good defense. The skip pass got the defense to over-rotate. They over-rotate and, and give up the offensive rebound that turns into another three for Davis. Last five games, Davis is 18 for 33 from three-point range. 23 in the game, ahead of the season average of the Americans' leading score. Houston without Marcus Sasser has a miss from Tremont Mark, who's just two for eight. They just don't have the same balance. Travel. Williams turns it over. Yeah, they just don't have the same balance. When you have multiple ball handlers, multiple guys that can facilitate a bit and they'll initiate things off the bounce, uh, you're dangerous. It, it, the rotations are different. You know, the multiple guys that can come off a ball screen with Shed and Sasser, it, it's a different type of dynamic that you have to defend. Houston. Shed's going to have to do a lot. I think that's it. Second half, Shed's really going to have to do a lot, especially off the bounce, getting it into the paint. He's just one for seven for four points. Roberts leads the way with eight. Arsenault, the freshman, making his first career start has seven. Here's Mark. Here's Arsenault. Shot fake on the three. Pretty. Calmly into a two that's grabbed by Roberts. Roberts with his tenth rebound. Houston will work it back around to Mark. It's scrambled defensively for Memphis. It's something they weren't always good at. Over Williams, that's way off the mark. Roberts has another rebound, and Roberts finally gets it to go. It's a good start for Houston. Just they got on the offensive glass, and they gave up one on the other end, though. They've got to be careful. Just limiting opportunities for Memphis when they're on defense. 16 offensive rebounds have only been turned into eight second chance points. McCann, the transfer from Georgia Southern. Is hooked by Mark, who commits his second foul. Be interesting to see who can control the tempo of this this second half. I mean, you heard Penny Hardaway really trying to play fast. Well, Kelvin's going to have to slow this thing down, and once he gets control of it. Byron, what did you hear from Kelvin Sampson at halftime? Yeah, he said, keep fighting. We got it down to 15. Let's see if we can get it down to 10. I asked him if, it, if the pace was really creating problems. He said, it's not the pace, it's the turnovers yeah. that are giving Memphis those opportunities. I think the pace is ultimately to avoid allowing Houston to set their defense. So if you just kind of cram it down their throats, force them into a transition scramble, and then keep moving the basketball, keep looking to attack, the defense never really gets set. And without Sasser on the floor, they are different. Sasser is one of the best communicators. He's one of the best on the ball defenders. So you take him off, and you're, you're asking different personnel to play significant minutes. That's a lot to ask. Against the team in Memphis, who is on another level right now. Free throws for DeAndre Williams. The oldest player in Division I men's college basketball, 26 years old. He's a Houston, Texas native who was hoping he would have been done by college a long time ago by now. He's had a winding journey to yep. get here. Some time in homeschool programs, trouble with credits, applying. Was going to go to a junior college. That didn't end up working out. Ended up finally beginning his career at Evansville. He would transfer from there to Memphis. He wasn't eligible initially. 
But since the moment he stepped out of the court in a game at Tulane a couple of years ago, everything changed with the Memphis program. Oh, completely. And look, if you're diligent and you have a good attitude, it all seems to make sense in the end. And I'm willing to bet DeAndre Williams would say that. He's been diligent. He's had a great attitude about things. He lifts his team every day, and it all works out in the end. Chris Davis lost in a jumper. Williams or McCadden fighting for that rebound. Mark's got it. Slower shooting start to the half for Memphis, but Houston only with two points in the first three minutes. Roberts to back down Williams. Walker's had a tough shoot yeah, tonight, yeah, and he needed yeah. it. He was one for seven before that. The freshman of the year, Jarris Walker. And that was good patience by Roberts and Walker. Roberts just kind of working down to, to get to get that secondary defender in Lawson to just dig down a little bit to be able to give Walker an open shot opportunity. Walker was ready for it in rhythm. Raises the percentage of that shot. Davis. It's going to be Houston ball, according to Pat Adams. Betty Hardaway's calling for a review, but we're nowhere near that. It's not under two minutes. It's the swizzle stick. I think it's instinctive for a coach at this point. Yeah, ball goes well, out of bounds, you want to review. The, you look at the crowd. The crowd does the same thing. Well, we really don't want reviews because we don't want the game to get slow and physical and boring. We, we want it to be fast and physical yeah. and fun. Roberts into Lawson. He's got to the left. Battle along the boards is won by Memphis. And Lomax comes out of there with it after McCadden got the rebound. Now McCadden's really good for them, too. Terrific athlete, great length. They have the right combination of physicality, toughness, and length and athleticism. It's an intercept by Walker. Hey, Williams thought he got hit on the arm. Shed. They need a basket here, Houston. Shed. And he's fouled. McCadden with his third. Memphis led by 15 at the half. They're up 14 at the under 16 of the American title game. But you've got one of the best point guards in the country in Kendrick Davis and, and one of those culture pieces in DeAndre Williams. Infectious. That energy, that passion, the joy is infectious. And, of course, Houston without Marcus Sasser, Myron, who tried to give it a go, but obviously will not be playing in this game. Yeah, Kelvin Sampson said his absence is not an excuse. Our lack of defensive intensity in the first half is on us. He said they can't look at Marcus Sasser and his absence as a reason as to why that first half got away from them. They got to refocus now, knowing one of their stars is not coming back. I think it's a 12-point game. It's not like this is over by any means. The Houston fans get up off their feet, as the bench does as well. Here's Williams. Lomax feeds Davis. He's taken over the game tonight, Kendrick Davis. The Houston, Texas native. Five to shoot it. Lobs into a dangerous territory. Lawson gets it back to him. And Davis throws up a brick. Good defense. And, and, I, and I like that Houston's not blowing up that ball screen. Kendrick Davis is too good. He'll welcome a double and he'll pass out of it. And they'll have an advantage. Shed got switched on to Lawson. Arsenault, three ball. In and out. That would have made it a nine-point yep. game. Uh, the key for Memphis is don't play tight. Keep put, forcing the issue. Keep talking about what Penny talked about. Play fast. Get it to Williams, who follows his own oh, miss a little too quickly. Mark grabs the rebound away. Memphis one for seven to start the half. Walker. No. In and out again. Roberts one hands it to himself there and puts go. it in. Here you go. Okay, we got it to 10, and I know that's kind of that, that cliche thing, just get it to 10, but the reality is now you feel as if you can play more possession to possession, force Memphis into efficiency and maybe less pace. Memphis takes a timeout. They're on their feet, the Houston fans. It's starting to tighten. This is where it gets hard. What do you got to do here? So he's challenging them, fellas. He's challenging, but but also Penny was so adamant about playing fast in the first half, and, and it's been hard to be able to keep the pace up, partially because Houston's gotten gotten some baskets to go, right? You get a basket to go, you get your defense set. Houston with 17 offensive rebounds. Memphis with a 10-point lead, closing in on 14 to play in the American title game. Lomax cut off by Walker. 
Williams with a whole host of Cougars around him and a good possession out of the timeout as Memphis gets Williams to the line. But that's why I think the zone has been good for Houston. It's been able to slow the game down. And by slowing the game down, you're limiting the rhythm and the swagger and the edge that Memphis played with in the first half. Almost as if you can make it a, a your turn, my turn kind of basketball where that's where Houston will thrive in this game. They, they don't want this up and down. Not, not, with, not with Memphis the way they've been playing. Fifth year senior Williams at the line, the Houston native. It's the first. Spring season is in full swing. Here's what we're featuring on ESPN Plus for the American Conference. More than 170 softball games, more than 210 baseball games, and more than 50 women's lacrosse games. If you're an AAC fan and you don't have it, sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash AAC. No offense to lacrosse and baseball, but softball is one of the best watches on television. Hey, you know I agree with you. I know. It's I'm awesome. spreading the gospel of softball. Here's Mark into the lane. Got cut off by Dandridge. Arsenault passes up the three. Big. Arsenault hits the two. You're, you're, you're starting to get Memphis to scramble a little bit by getting guys into the paint. Gets guys into the paint. That defense collapses. Play out of the kick out. Long closeouts lead to drive and kick or pump fake opportunities. First time it's been single digits since 26-18. Williams again. They get him in the post. Williams fouled by Walker who's picked up his second and third on yep. successive possessions. And Williams does a good job cutting to that open spot. I think he's, at this point in the game, it's a nine-point game. If you get into a spot of vulnerability for the defense, you've got to be more deliberate, right? Now, he can be loose with it. Watch the ball. He kind of brings the ball high, like rip through, be deliberate at this point in the game, particularly in those areas of vulnerability for the Houston defense. Reggie Chaney replaces Walker. Sixth man of the year in for the freshman of the year. And Cheney's immediately on the ball and Williams. Double comes against Andrews. They call this the monster set when they double the big. He gets it out to Lomax. Floater off the iron. Fight for the ball. Wrestled away by Cheney. Ripped it out of the hands of Dandridge. Here comes Shen. basket here and the roof's going to come off mark arsenal uncontested offensive rebound it's dead it is a six-point game arsenal saved the possession and shed bringing houston back to life and houston's really gotten memphis to chase and kelvin sampson the emotions on that side of the floor starting to level up to what we saw from memphis in the first half This zone has been disruptive in terms of the rhythm. It's been disruptive. That's a foul against Shed. They can't believe it. Oh, this is getting good, isn't it? This is getting really good. Again, you get made baskets and get set up in this zone. Memphis was thriving when they were able to get stops, rebounds, and then play fast downhill, get quick shots and almost have Houston chase the game. It's been a lot different with Houston getting on the offensive glass again, kind of imposing their will and identity on the game. And then getting that defense set, where Memphis doesn't have that same rhythm and edge and swagger that they had in the first. Foul's been changed to Mark, that's his third. Williams will take a seat. Memphis led this game by 20 in the first half. Interesting lineup for Memphis. It really is. Lawson and Dandridge, the bigs. By interesting, I mean challenging for Kendrick Davis. And, oh, he draws Mark's fourth foul. Wow. That smart. is a big one. He's so smart. He's so smart. He knows it. He knows he's got the matchup. That's why Mark was trying to do such a, a good job of not allowing Kendrick Davis to get the catch. And yeah, he's just... He's got his hand in there. Yep. Oh, he wants kind of the, maybe the hook and hold. If Kendrick Davis did in any way lock arms with Mark, that's a smart play. Kelvin and Kellett Sampson are talking about it with Doug Schaus. Emmanuel Sharp is going to check into the game. But it's Davis at the line where he lives. It's five for five today. <laughs>
Davis with 25, the all-time leading scorer in the American Conference, who's now set a record for most points in an American Conference tournament. Well, I, like, I like this, too, picking up and pressuring. They want the ball in Sharp's hand. They want him to handle, and, and Lomax is going to pressure. As good an on-ball defender as there is in the league, and maybe the country, and Lomax is all over Sharp. Kelvin Sampson wants a foul, and now they'll get it. Yeah. They got it late from Pat Adams. It's on Lawson, and it's his third. Memphis only with its second. I mean, it, Lomax smelled blood with Sharp having that basketball. I love the double. When Shed got the ball, they doubled to get it back into Sharp's hands. Just a smart play, and that's going to be Lawson. I don't know. Over the back, I guess. Lomax hounds the ball even to the back. I mean, without Sasser, you just you work to get it out of Shed's hands, and I think you have an advantage as a defense. Pull up three. Back. Oh, you got to get it out of his hands, no question. No question, you got to get it out of Shed's hands. He's going to take over this game. Oh, nobody uh -oh. guarded Davis. Absolute misfire, and they get away with it. Lomax saves it, though, to Dandridge. Davis. Davis on Arsenault, crossing the freshman, floating it to Hardaway, no good, tip by Roberts, Davis has another, Davis down the lane, left it short, Dandridge, fourth shot of the possession, finally Memphis gets a hoop. Look, there may have been a whistle there, I, I don't think anyone would have heard it, there were bodies all over the floor, I feel like that's how the last 11-11 is going to go. The lead swells back to seven. Dandridge with four points and some big minutes off the bench. Shed slicing. We've got a foul. Doug Shouse has the foul on Lomax, and it is going to be two shots for part Shed of, when we return. Part of leveling up in the game is obviously matching toughness, matching you got the actual. Well, the guy was boogieing on the screen. Yes. So two free Easily throws distracted. for Shed, who Kelvin Sampson calls their most valuable player. Junior from Maynard, Texas. When you think about where Jamal Shedd was at the start of last season, he was buried. Marcus Sasser was yeah. set to break out, and Sasser ended up with a toe injury that knocked him out for the season in late December. Houston had all kinds of injuries, including Tremont Mark, who missed all but seven games last season. Shedd was maybe the fourth string guard. Ended up as the starting point guard on an Elite Eight team. And without Marcus Sasser today, Jamal Shedd is trying to lead Houston back from the dead. Ten points in the second half, and the Cougars are as close as they've been in a long time. Yeah, I think Houston has almost changed how Memphis feels about themselves at, at this point. Memphis just hasn't been as confident. That's Hardaway. That's way deep. Robert snatches his 15th rebound. Well, you're going to get that shot, but that's not the one you want. you got to move it. Still probe inside. It's short corner and cut off of it. Shed against Williams, playing with confidence. Arsenal, he'll take it. He'll miss it. And it's Williams soaring in for the rebound. Lomax with an oncoming Arsenal will hold the ball. Good job of Houston getting on the offensive glass, but also being patient, getting back defensively. I think you got to get Williams inside here as best as possible. Kendrick Davis needs the ball. He, he can move people and get the ball into areas that others can't. Walker trying to body up Williams. Out to Lomax. Lomax. Williams. Open three. It's good. DeAndre Williams the answer. But again, it came from DeAndre Williams kind of probing a bit off the bounce, drawing defense in, kicking out to Lomax. Then Lomax has the long closeout. He attacks, kicks back out to Williams. Double-double for the first team all-conference player. Arsenal try to take Lomax, and Arsenal does not win that battle. Roberts keeps it alive, sharp on the deck, getting hugged from behind by Hardaway, and it's a foul on Jaden Hardaway. Oh, man, this is 50-50 balls are going to feel like a battle. I always joke and say that there's no 50-50 balls when you play Houston because they're more like 80-20 balls. They get most of them, but against Memphis, these 50-50 balls, they're going to battle it out. Second foul on Hardaway, and Franklin replaces him. Mark, back in the game for Arsenal. And I think Sharp is going to grow up a lot in this game. You're going to have to. How could you not? <laughs> I feel like I'm going to grow up in this game. <laughs> Growing gray hair is just being on the sideline. Sharp, nope. Walker and Roberts are there. Roberts gets another rebound. That's 16. What a presence he's been. 
He'll set the hard screen. Shed drives it into Dandridge. Lost it. And it's last touch by Shed. And Memphis gets the turnover. Like, if you're going to commit to the ball that much, you've got to have those active hands. That's it. Kendrick oh. Davis understands Dandridge. Dandridge is coming over. Who'd that go off of? I think it hit Shed in the head on the way down. Well, they got it right, right? Yeah. Are you questioning the officials? You said who'd go off of? You asked me a question and I answered. Have you done that job before for you to question You asked like me that? a question. What do you want me to do? You are said on air to me there, there are no rhetorical so questions you're, that you're, you're asking getting, me. You're getting really defensive, Kevin. I thought I finally got the <laughs> hang of you after three years. My gosh. <laughs> you're poking the bear over here. <laughs> Baby bear. Little cub. Yep. Just a peaceful cub. Little Jersey cub. Davis for two. A one and one. It's always two, you assume, yeah. with Davis, who's an 85% free throw shooter. I, I think the challenge for Memphis now is you're going to have to almost downshift and play at a different speed, be more calculated, be more deliberate with the basketball operate a little bit more all things that they didn't really have to do in the first half when they were thriving it's going to be a little different but the idea is win the game right you know in a way that first half is where you beat your opponent now win the game the lead was down to five memphis has pushed it back to 10 under nine to play in the american championship game but don't play not to lose that's the worst mm -hmm. memphis hasn't won a conference tournament title in 10 years as roberts has Fouled by Dandridge. That's good Dandridge's foul. second. Roberts will shoot two. It's good foul. Great execution. Jamal Shedd, nice little pocket pass on the on the screen and roll. Really no screen at all. And I think this take away an easy two, make a murder at the free throw line. It's smart. It just feels it feels like the last 848 or Take something out of everybody in here. Yep. You wonder how much the last 11 12 took out of Houston. Yeah, you're right. It's a good point. Just kind of getting back into it. But it's different. You get a new life when it gets close. So it's almost as if you forget all about it. You get new life. It's it's hope. Roberts misses two. He is two for six at the line Perfect. today. Now it's a really good foul. It's a huge committed. Lomax. All right, now you can play the matchups because they're in man. Lomax hands off Dandridge, too strong. Fight for the ball. It's Roberts again. That's 17, a new single game American tournament record. It's a nice play by Lomax, but I don't think there's a possession that Kendrick Davis doesn't touch the ball. And there have been a few of those of late. Yeah, he should at least touch it and watch what the defense does around him. Shed sets up Walker. Three ball. Bang. Yes, sir. Yep. That pick and pop is there. They, they've been late. Memphis has been a little late on that ball screen coverage. At times they're flat. Sometimes they come up. Maybe it's kind of anything goes. But Walker shot it well. Low Not pass. There. Low Not pass. There. Walker's on the deck. Walker gets rid of it to Mark. And you're throwing low passes to Dandridge. That's a tough catch. Again, Kendrick Davis has to be the guy. Two straight possessions. He hasn't touched it. Walker got Dandridge in the air. Down the lane. A wild shot. Davis is going to touch it now. Davis is going to go all the way, and then Roberts deflects it out of bounds, and we can catch our breath with 7.32 remaining oh, and a man. title on the line. Yeah, catch your breath, tighten the shoulder pads, lace the shoes up. Holy smoke. We're nine line, and they are not thinking for one second about that seating right now with the American Tournament trophy on the line. I just can't wait to see that team that, that they stand up and go, yay, we got that. And then they announce Memphis, and they're like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. They're going to be underseated wherever they are, is oh, my prediction. You. Roberts tips the inbound pass, a steal for Shed. And wow. Davis stops. What the break. defense? Dude, you have no idea how hard Ooh. that is to stop someone full speed. You want to talk about a quarterback, a cornerback in defense? That, that was it. Without fouling two, and now here's Davis, who can be a one man break. Williams slips inside, big. Mark. Williams with 14. Really big. They haven't been able to get much in transition, and that started with Kendrick Davis. I'm going to have to go back and show that. Kendrick Davis stopping that transition opportunity with, with Shed. That was like honestly the best quarterback in football I've ever seen. Crazy breakdown.
Mark spinning into Williams. Mark is fouled. I mean, you've got to you got to watch this and just try to think about someone coming at you full speed, which man, they can go either way with it. And Kendrick Davis has to at least just contain, right? You don't even expect to stop. You contain, maybe shade towards the, the sideline. Just a really remarkable job defensively. Fouling too. Mark at the line. Two shot foul for Shaman Mark. Mark two for two. Seven point game under seven to play. Memphis looking for its first conference tournament title in 10 years. One of the hottest teams in the country against a Houston team that's won 13 straight and has won this tournament trophy the last two seasons. Houston's done a good job limiting the impact. What a fine. Lawson brings it down. He's smothered by Walker, and there's a foul in there. Lawson's got to be ready for that. You cannot bring it down against Houston. They're not going to allow you to go back up. If anything, you're going to have to earn it at the free throw line. But what a play by DeAndre Williams. Houston's done a, just a masterful job of limiting the impact of Kendrick Davis on the offensive end. And, you know, it's not about stopping him every single time. It's just you want to limit his impact on the game. And taking passes away is certainly a good way to do it. It's the fourth out of Walker, and Cheney heads to the scorer's table. As Lawson puts on a free throw. Really have shot it better from the free throw line 13 and 19 no, not 13 excuse me 13 to 15 on the day Might be 14 to 16. I don't know. I'm just looking down. What is it? It is 13 to 15. Okay, I was right. right I didn't know if mine updated Step broadcast folks update very quickly plug Strong Wi-Fi here in Dickies Arena and now it's 13 to 16 Rebound number 18 for Roberts. Nine offensive rebounds, nine defensive rebounds. I like Lomax picking up full court, and I like DeAndre Williams kind of shading his way, but there's no reason to gamble. But Lomax at times likes to gamble, play defense from behind, not in this situation. Mark steps in on McCadden. Mark is off balance. Mark Travel. traveled. Yeah, dragged the pivot foot, and that's the eighth Houston turnover, Mark's third. The cat is really important to him, uh, that they really have he's got great footwork, great movement, particularly defensively, great length and athleticism. He's been good defensively, he's great going to the rim, he's been on the glass both offensively and defensively. Houston brings in Franklin for Lawson, so they go a little bit smaller here, but, John, with four guards. But look at Shed just taking Davis away. Again, you want to limit his impact. Lomax, great find, and McCannon wraps around to score it. Did. You want to play box and one, you have to lift that defense, get that box to space. It's not really a box and one, but Shed's taking, Shed's taking Davis away. But if you can move that defense out, four guys can't cover the whole half court. Houston's got it down to five. Memphis swells the lead back up to ten. Tigers have led from every moment since five to three. Shed, wild pass. Arsenault's able to grab it, nearly walked with it. Houston's out of sorts, and here's the steal. Lomax poked it away. Lomax scores it. He's fouled. He's going to the line. All right, well, I won't tell you what he's saying right now. I have an idea. Let's just say that he's bold. I, I think that's what he's saying. I'm bold. Uh, remarkable play by, by Alex Lomax, and he does. I, I talked about maybe taking too many chances, gambling out front. Yep. Something about him. I'm bold. <laughs> Do you know what he was saying? Uh, I have an idea. All right. This is a young man who was coached by Penny Hardaway back in junior high school. Sixth grade on, Penny Hardaway has been Alex Lomax's coach. All these years later, eight years later, he's still playing for Penny. And he's on the verge of leading Memphis to the American Tournament Championship. 136th game of his college career, plus a few more years under Penny in junior high school and high school. Probably even more than eight when you figure it. Arsenal couldn't catch it cleanly. Drives it into Williams. Yep. Offensive yep. foul! Williams draws the charge. 
That, that's where Arsenal will learn just a jab to get you get a defender off balance before you make that attack. He just went right into the sweep sweep, sweep through and ran over DeAndre Williams, who was he was playing it. He was playing drive. And I think that the the adjustment of the night was Penny picking up his defense and forcing a little bit more pace on the game, a little bit more pressure. And then you only have to cover for about 15, 20 seconds once that ball gets up, once it, once it beats the pressure. But they've really picked things up here late in the second half. And this is the matchup you like. Davis steps back up sharp. He got hit. And he missed the three. No foul. Williams picks it up. Williams there he is. gets it to go. There are no better facial reactions than DeAndre Williams. Eight straight points for Memphis. Look at him. Look at him. If you can't feed off of that guy, his energy, his passion, his shoes. Yeah. They found this amazing bond. Davis in his first year here, transferring from SMU. Williams, who transferred over from Evansville a couple of years ago. And Penny Hardaway, who didn't have a day of college coaching experience when he got the job. And five years later, has Memphis on the verge of something truly special. Well, he's learning, too. I mean, Penny's going to be better in five years than he is today. That, that's unnecessary, though, Max. But I, I just think Penny's grown a lot. But in, in that process, you learn about what works for you. Right? And that's important, whether it's your staff, whether it's your personnel, your players, your, your, your ancillary staff within the program. You, you almost find what's consistent and play to that year in, year out. But I think that one of the bigger pieces they found that it doesn't have to be with the world's best talent. It's got to be with the right guys and then build that talent around those right guys. And they all play to an identity that is, it's infectious and, and it wins. One and one for Shed. Seven for seven from the line today. Yeah, that's it. Alex Lomax right now tapping his chest saying, my bad. He knows. No reason to pick up that foul. Stop the clock. Put Shed at the free throw line with 427 left. One for two. Lomax has the ball. Interesting to see how much they try to limit Kendrick Davis. There's only so much you can do. Looking more like a 3-2 front here. I'd look for Williams to get inside that defense. Wild oh pass by Franklin. It's a turnover. <laughs> Benny didn't say a word to Franklin. He didn't have to. No, but I mean, that's kind of part of it, though. Like, it's how they are. And, and there are times where I think you got to live with it. you got to play through it. But you've got to limit it in these situations. Like, I'm okay with the lack of discipline at times. But there needs to be situational discipline. Under four to play. Shed with 15. Shed with a three. Franklin in his face. Roberts crashes. I think it hit the cat on the way down, and it will be Houston ball. They have one heck of a mountain to climb, though. Memphis is on the verge. The Tigers looking to take down the Cougars. A championship game averaging 57 and a half points a game over their first two games in the conference championship. And Davis just doesn't let up. And he was feeling it coming into this one, both both as a player, but also emotionally. Sixth straight 20-point game for the Houston, Texas native, who began his career right here in Fort Worth, playing for TCU yep. for a season. That's a foul on Williams reaching in. Transferred to SMU. Two-time first-team all-conference there, and he's finishing his career in Memphis. This is what he said one week ago when Houston came into Memphis and beat them at the buzzer. Jamal Shedd hit the shot. We don't look at them as the number one team. We think we're the best team every time we play. Maybe we needed this a week later. That proves to be a rather prophetic ending to that statement. You didn't like the other parts of what he said? I did, but you I jumped ahead because it took you too dang long to get to it. You were, this, their setup was so... What's TV, John, so people can read what they oh, see on the screen? okay, that too. Yeah. We'll figure it out at some point. Walker, two for two. You're proud of yourself for that comeback. I just you? hope there are a lot of people at home that think we hate each other. <laughs> Play in, be the wrestling heels, you know. Right, look, if you can't, if you can't enjoy doing this, and you don't have a pulse, you probably don't like puppies either. I'll tolerate you for this. High paid tolerance you have. Ten to shoot it for Davis. Twelve point game. Three twenty to go. Davis feeds Lomax. He's been terrific. Inside McCadden. No. Well, it hit the. Oh, no. It was off of him either way. 
The cat just didn't realize he was much further under the basket. That was a good find by Lomax. Go to the other side of the rim, it's there. Easy in hindsight, hard when it's happening that fast. A little more full court pressure by Lomax against Shed. Fifth year senior Lomax. All five of his uh, seasons at Memphis, coming from East High School. Under three to play with his team up a dozen. Shed. Walker, pull up. That's offline. And it's Franklin who had it knocked away. Roberts gets it. Mark three ball. Yes. Second chance opportunities. That's going to be a two. That Adam said he had his foot on his yep, line. Long two. I think he did. Interesting situation there with, with with this smaller lineup out there a lot of switching out top So it's been hard for Houston to get the matchup. They want to be able to attack with shed off the bounce Davis going to take a whole lot of air out of the ball and Memphis will use its second timeout Still a lot of time Kev. That, that's the third time I'd use my Memphis it, your it's, There's still a lot of time here. So you really want to be good out of this timeout You want to make sure you get something the game it was a great game SMU had the lead Memphis came back late and Kendrick Davis has still never played in the NCAA tournament well, He's gonna, gonna play change. there this weekend yeah. He's gonna play there and whoever they play is not gonna want to play him Davis will inbound it and he does get it into McCat. Cat has got to get it right back to Davis. Yeah, he doesn't. He finds Hardaway instead. Pulls it out. Lomax with the ball. Davis has it. He's got the switch with Walker. He's in the lane. He floats it. Wow. He scores it. Wow. He does it all. Yeah, you're, you're watching one of the best point guards in college basketball. And look, he may not be talked about enough because he's not going to be a lottery pick, but who cares? Like, these are the guys that make college basketball. DeAndre Williams is going to get talked about because he's not a lottery pick. Probably not, but who cares? Davis with 29. Houston has Ooh. to score basically every possession now, and they don't score there. McCannon rips it away. Davis around Walker. 1.45 to go, and the Memphis Tigers look like they are well and truly going to pull this thing out. Controlled throughout. It, it's now, this is the this is the missing link with the basketball right now, right? They had they could compete with anybody. They could level up. They could match physicality and toughness. At times, at, at times, it's undisciplined. But now you have a closer in Kendrick Davis. Davis around Shed. Batted up in the air. One by Mark. With a minute 19 to go. Walker down the floor. Walker tough. Loads it. And timeout. Houston will use its final timeout. Penny mentioned that he, he's a closer and he's in kill mode. Now be for, for the program, but really for Marcus Sastry, who's been a great thing for that program and that community. He did not play in the tournament last year, but said he likely would have returned for the final four. Houston lost in the Elite Eight. Davis will inbound it. Memphis has a timeout remaining, and Davis gets it into Lomax. He lost it, and it's a turnover. I don't really like Davis taking it in. He's a guy who can get open. He knows how to play. He knows how to change speeds and directions. I mean, he's probably your best decision maker, so you want it in that sense. But I want Davis to get the ball. Shed will throw it in. Gets it into Mark for three. That's short, but oh, he's boy. fouled. Oh, boy. This is this is the part right here. I said like you, You've got to be disciplined here down the stretch Officials A Couple of stakes and Jimmy Cherry. No, oh, that's Jimmy Cherry. Yeah So mark for three he is a 76 percent free throw shooter <laughs> This is this is interesting because that foul, if he makes all three of the, the, the shots, it feels different. It just feels different, and you start to get tight. And the key is you got Ken Davis, but you got to get him the basketball. So I'm looking at the Memphis bench, and I'm like, all right, who do I like on this bench from a decision-making standpoint? And it's like Demarie Franklin at some point, but maybe not yet. Mark goes two for three. That's a big miss. Davis has to get it. Walker's all over Williams. He fouls him. And that's the fifth on Jairus Walker. He is fouled out with a minute seven to go. Not just a, a great player, but an impressive human being. Like, just an impressive dude. 
And if you come into the Houston program, you know, you know at some point you're going to be showcased. Your talent just kind of forces its way to the top, right? Cream rises in sports. But I, I just think physically, one of the more impressive dudes, similar to Jalen Duran, yes, last year. Two free throws, Williams. Chandler Lawson replaces Jaden Hardaway. Demario Franklin's in for Alex Lomax. Three possession game right now. Minute seven to go. Memphis with the only timeout. Williams, the oldest player in men's college basketball, 26 years old. A long and winding road to take him here has taken him to the brink of a championship. One more free throw for DeAndre Williams. And he missed them both. Wow. Eight point game. Got to go quickly. It's Shed. With a minute to go, Shed steps back, little push off, sets up Arsenault, puts it up, too strong, Franklin the rebound, he's bear hugged by Roberts, Franklin going to the line at 53 seconds left. Now, Arsenault just, just so funny when you see young guys who think too much, right? You got to know that situation, if you get a look, you got to take it, and you got to shoot it with confidence and conviction. And if you shoot it without conviction but confidence, you're actually fooling yourself. You've got to want to take the shot. Otherwise, it's not confidence, nor has, does it have any conviction. To Marie Franklin. Oh, boy. He's, just, he's like, oh, look, we're going to make this thing interesting. And I, I think you need to make him maybe. Oh, no, no. Memphis only has one timeout left. I just feel like this is almost a regroup moment for Memphis. Transfer from Illinois, Chicago in his first year. Franklin goes one for two. It is a three possession yeah. game only if they're all threes. A little confusion with Lawson. Not sure where he's at. Mark. Shed got to put up a three. It's nope. short. And it's out of bounds to Memphis. And the confetti is hanging up there in the rafters, ready to be released. What are you talking about? That confetti's been falling all week. <laughs> Every time the base hits, I get some confetti in my hair. It's ready to be released in mass. How about that? Not just drip by drip. Slow drip? Yeah. Davis lost it, got it back. Davis still has it. They're not fouling him. You got to foul him. They don't want to foul him, but you got to foul him. And Davis calls timeout. He let 13 seconds. Go off the clock. Interesting they called timeout in that situation. On the road, they went 10-1 and one down yep. the stretch. Made it to the American title game. They were the runner-up last year. It just feels like yes. something changed so, in that moment. So what I think changed was Penny came across as the authority on basketball in Memphis. I think that was the most important thing. I actually told him that earlier this year. He came across as authority, and it was galvanizing for his team. It was galvanizing for the program and galvanizing for the players within the program. And Kendrick Davis with the icing on the victory cake. 31 for Kendrick Davis, the Houston, Texas native. I think this feels good if you're Penny Hardaway. Holy smokes. Shed is fouled. <laughs> You say holy smokes. Remember the mantra when Penny got yeah. out of Memphis. It was we want the smoke. And they were, for a couple of years, a good team that couldn't break through. And nationally, a bit of a laughing stock because of some of the hype, because of the recruiting, with the lack of results. The well, results came balance. last year, yeah. and now yeah. the results are going to be a chance. They didn't have the balance to live up to the hype. And that, and that was something that very clearly Penny probably had to learn. As you start to kind of build this, you hear the Memphis crowd going, man, they're awesome. All right. you know, as you start to build this, you realize the most important pieces are, are not the, the young talent, right? It, the most important pieces are, are your stabilizers and your DeAndre Williams. You see him going off right now. They're going to lead together. These two extraordinary players yeah. and extraordinary human beings. <laughs> Tries to Smart. intentionally miss it, and he jumped into the lane too quickly. I mean, I, I told Penny earlier this year, and they weren't even playing their best basketball at this time. I said, look, the difference is you guys are a joy to watch. Like, it's it's still wild at times, but, man, what a joy they have been to watch. And look out, if you see them, you see them in your bracket, have fun. 
Memphis has dethroned the Kings and the American. And the Tigers are on top. 75-65 for the first time in 10 years. Memphis wins a conference tournament championship.